Um, no. All right, we picked our victim, but what are we gonna use it for? See what we have here. We have an 80cc two-stroke engine that will perfectly fit this bike. Maybe not. There isn't much room, but actually I have an idea. So this bike has dual suspension, blah, 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 blah. What if we just get rid of the suspension? We get rid of this, this, we can keep this. Then we can just extend this pipe here, weld it to this one, and then it's gonna be a solid frame bike, and it's gonna have this opening here in which we can mount our engine. It's gonna work. Then the other question is the chain from here to go down there, the top part of the chain is gonna be fine, but the bottom is gonna hit here when it's coming back. This is what I mean. These two arms go in and then straight. So what if we cut them here and flip them around, then they're gonna go a little bit out and then in, and this way there's gonna be more room for the chain to come here. Anyway, so these are some ideas. Of course, in the process, it's gonna become a little bit easier. So as you can guess, this is not for me, it's for my kids and I want them to be part of this project. So I bought it especially for them so they can work with me on something that they're gonna be using after. So it's a little bit of an educational project for them. So I really want them to be enjoying what they're building, not only helping me in the garage. So that's why we bought this. So it is uh, 80cc, I'm actually surprised. I thought it was 50cc, but it is actually 80cc such a small engine it's like a pocket engine <laughs> so i showed you a little bit of my ideas maybe we're gonna switch it maybe we can pick up different bike maybe you saw we have multiple outside but i think this one would be the best for for this project so we will start from somewhere and we'll see where that's gonna get us all right so we have two of the kids here the other two are not interested i guess so what's your name um uh, shy <laughs> You're shy? Don't be shy. What's your name? Hi. <laughs> What's your name? Nick. <laughs> Not your nickname, your name. Nick. <laughs> okay. Nick Shy, to be correct. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna look a little bit at the bike here. We're gonna have a discussion and we'll see what we're gonna do, how, how we're gonna proceed, and then we're gonna tell you what the decision was. All right, so we got uh, everything out just to see what parts we have here. So we have the gas tank. That's like a tensioner for the chain. So, okay, so that should come here. Tensioner for the chain, spark plug, and that I, I'm guessing this is the uh, coil. Exhaust, the engine, the rear sprocket. This, these are the mounting parts that, that we can mount the sprocket to the wheel, the chain. That's a clutch lever. I figured it has a clutch, which is a good thing because, because I'm happy if these guys learn how to ride with a clutch, not just automatic, because their ATV is automatic or semi-automatic. Still has gears, but it yeah, doesn't have clutch. clutch. Yeah. So that's not interesting. This is going to be more interesting because it has clutch, so they're going to learn how to operate it with a clutch. Then we have the carburetor, handlebars, which is a good thing because our handlebars here are like... <laughs> A little bit sticky. sticky, yeah. And uh, the throttle is on a handlebar, like a real motorcycle. On their ATV, they have the thumb thing. So we have everything. And the guys came up with a cool idea. They think that if we cut this here, and we cut this, and we cut this away, and we switch this arm with that arm, we're going to have enough room here for the engine. And okay. the chain is not going to touch this here. They discussed it on their own and they came up with this cool idea. 
that is gonna affect our brakes actually so we're gonna have to figure out a different mount for the brakes but let's first make it run and ride and then we're gonna think how to stop it who cares about stopping okay. so we can uh, we're gonna fix this chain we're not gonna throw it away and buy a new one we just need to uh, lubricate it and it's gonna be fine we can actually take it out and dump it into oil all right we put it on the on the table we improvised here a little bit <laughs> we made our own vice but it is pretty solid it's not going anywhere and we can actually even lift it here like that i don't know if i can do it one-handed can someone help me please here okay so we can even do it like this and now we can start working on the rear wheel start cutting here whatever we're gonna do Wow, that's a lot of clumps. <laughs> How do I know when it's going to start? When it comes off. Okay, so we stripped it more or less here, the rear end. We took out the brake, we removed the, the gears from the back, uh, the shock absorber from here. Now we have these arms moving up and down. And we were discussing here something that we didn't think about. And that's this bar here. This bar is not existing on the other side and that's because it would be on the way for the chain and the other thing is here this little extension which we don't have it on the other side because that's holding the gears even though i don't know if we're going to be using the gears we it's a good idea to keep them so this is fine because this is uh, steel we can weld it here though on the frame we're not going to be able to weld anything because it's aluminum so in the frame we can't add anything to it we can only cut off so i think the next point here the next thing that we should do is to cut this off and see where we're gonna mount the engine and then next step would be to put the sprocket on the other side of the wheel and then we're gonna put them together and we will see where the chain is gonna ride and that's gonna tell us whether we need to move something here or if we have to, what we have to move. Okay, so we got rid of the main part of the frame that's on our way, but our engine still doesn't fit very well because these two rods are meant for a little bit thinner pipe here for the frame so if we remove them figure out another way of holding it maybe we can drill them a little bit further out i don't know but if we remove them we're going to be able to drop the engine a little bit further down and here on this side let me show you and here on this side right now we have pretty much a straight line here from the from this pipe so i was thinking if we run another pipe from another seat if we take a pipe like this and run it all the way down and then we can bolt this to it first of all let's remove these rods and see how far down it's gonna go all right it's late at night so the kids are sleeping but it's not too late for me to come and uh, have a power hour in the garage i think i'm gonna take this engine now and i'm gonna drill those holes so we can mount it so as you can see here we just need to move this hole a little bit so we can fit this rod there i have an idea about that i think we have just enough room here to drill new holes next to this and tap them but there's going to be a very thin wall be between the existing hole and the new one that we're going to drill so i'm going to fill this hole i'm going to just put the rods there then i'm going to cut them flush with the surface and i'm gonna drill the hole next to it or the new hole might even overlap with this one but that's gonna be fine all right the, the rods are in i tightened them as much as i could 
and this one I even over tightened and it snapped but that's perfectly fine because we're gonna have to cut them anyways. Well, with my luck, <laughs> these are the bolts that I was going to use. I was going to cut them shorter, but it turns out the threads are quarter inch with uh, 20 TPI pitch. And in my set here, the quarter inch 20 is broken. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to complete this project tonight. I'm going to have to go and buy another tap to complete my set and to be able to drill holes and tap them. So we're going to do something else. We're gonna take this wheel and we're gonna clean up the spokes a little bit because I don't wanna put the sprocket before I clean the wheel. Well, that would be a perfect job for one of the kids, but unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do it myself unless I lose my patience and leave it for them. <laughs> but I'm gonna start at least. It's not too hard, it just takes time. All right, it's been an hour and so I did, I guess, quarter, because this is half of this side only, and I still have to do the other half, and then I have to flip it and do it the other way. It takes a while. <laughs> Anyways, it's late, so I'm going to bed, and we will see tomorrow. Maybe I'm gonna ask one of the kids to do that. For now, I'm going to bed. All right, so it's the day after, and I got myself a quarter inch 20 TPI top and I'm just thinking here how deep we should go we have to go as deep as possible but of course we don't want to go into the crankcase judging on the fact that there are two bolts here I'm pretty sure that this is not hollow we can go all the way to there I believe because you know the beginning of the top doesn't make threads actually so we're gonna have fully formed threads only for about an inch but that's perfectly fine so I marked my drill bit here for a quarter inch top you need a drill bit number three which is approximately 732nd. I marked already here where I'm gonna drill it so I don't know if you see the lines here. I was gonna go on the outer line but I realized that I don't have so much space on this side and I want to be equal space on both sides so I'm gonna go here on this line and on this line. I'm gonna try without punching at center because I don't want to hammer on the engine. Am I square here? Four day here. We went into the, into this boat. Huh, that's fine. Okay, so now that it started, we're gonna start turning back for every half a turn. We're going to have to turn back and cut the shaving. Otherwise, we might make damaged threads. Nice and tight. We just have to decide how long to cut these bolts and for this we need to put it on the frame this is what they look like so it moved on me a little bit from the beginning then it went down i think this one went up a little bit but we're gonna be able to compensate so i'm not really sure if we're gonna be able to use the original bracket here because now the spacing between the holes is not gonna respond we might need to enlarge the holes a little bit yeah yeah won't work like this. <laughs> Sometimes the manual tools are more effective than the power tools, you know? Or pneumatic in this case. Perfect, so now we have to just 
decide how long we want the boat to be. Well, so we have two inches, two inches between the engine and this bracket. Same here. So two inches. So the, the two inches we need to add the distance that is inside the engine block, which we can measure later. And that's how long our boats need to be. <laughs> and that's two inches almost. So perfect. So we need to add like an inch on each side and that's where we're gonna cut them. Okay, that looks good, but we have a few little problems here. First of all, here, the this arm is touching our gear shifter or whatever that is called and it doesn't want to move so the arm needs to be a little bit higher than that the other problem is here we don't have much room for the spark plug so let's see if we can drop the engine a little bit which means we have to cut off this bracket because it's on our way and maybe just maybe we're gonna need to notch this part a little bit like that so we can uh, fit this inside that's gonna give us a little bit more room Well, this idea won't work because we have to drop it a lot. You see how much more it needs to go and also we need to have the cable on top. So we need a lot more room. So we have no choice but to give up this shifter here. And that's fine because we're gonna keep the rear gears. We can just put here the chain in the middle and that's where we're gonna leave it. We're not gonna switch it. If we get rid of that, we're gonna be able to drop this arm a lot lower, which is gonna make the bike higher actually, which is good. Well, that helped a little, but not much. Fit there, but if we need to remove the spark plug, but we can't even take the, the cable out. And also here, this is not really easy. I put a pipe, like I found a different pipe, and I put it there. And it fits perfectly, but we're not going to be able to put this bracket and the nuts. I think we're going to have to drop it even lower. This means we have to shorten this pipe or at least notch it so, so this bracket can go even lower than where it is now, because now it's limited by this. That looks better. Now we can put our bracket here. Almost. We can make it work. We can put our bracket and this is gonna work here. And here, in the worst case scenario, we're gonna be able to do our spark plug with a wrench. Or we're gonna make our own special tool for that. All right, our helper is leaving. He needs to go to bed, but he cleaned, actually this is the other side of the wheel now, he cleaned the rest of what I didn't clean last night and he started cleaning this side, so that's his task for the next few days. <laughs> I like it. Well, we have one small problem still. <laughs> problem is that this pipe that I found, this is just a shower curtain pipe, I think and it's a little bit too small for here. I just used it as a template, but eventually I'm gonna take a pipe like this from a seat and I'm gonna push it all the way through. So it's gonna go a little bit like that because you see now it is not where it needs to be. So 
that's how it's gonna be and this brings the spark plug too high again and also the angles are not right so i think <laughs> one last thing i'm gonna try i'm gonna cut this frame i'm gonna notch this frame it's not gonna weaken it that much we're gonna have still this part here which is not gonna allow it to to bend in so i think we're gonna be fine okay i clamped the pipe so it goes more or less where the actual pipe is gonna be and this is not too bad and here this is good even here this is good i'm happy with how much room i have there the only problem is now the carb <laughs> now the carb is gonna hit so <laughs> I started thinking maybe if I cut this pipe off and just put a pipe behind it, just like that maybe. But again, this is aluminum, I can't weld anything. Even this is aluminum. I thought maybe if I can shorten this intake, but even that is aluminum. So now maybe if I make an adapter and make it fit like this on an angle, that's not gonna be too bad okay so it's the next day and i think we found a solution here to our problem so i found this aluminum tube which is the exact size of this fits in perfectly and it is the exact same as this as well if we connect it here with a piece of hose that would be a perfect solution it is a little bit too long so i'm thinking if we cut it somewhere there and we put the hose between these two that would be great and it's going to reduce the angles too because the more angles you have here the more restricted the airflow is going to be so i'm just going to cut it here on 45 i'm actually happy about it and here's another look of it just so you can see if i cut it here where the blue mark is it, that's how it's going to be so let's replace this with uh, actual pipe that we're gonna use so we can have it on the exact same place and i think this is the pipe that we're gonna use so this seat is from another bike unless we want to use this seat here and the pipe from the other one well i think this one is going to be more comfortable this is the original seat from this bike i think this this one we're going to use and from this one we're only going to take the tube I made this plate that I can put here with holes for the boats so now the engine can be on something flat just like that okay so finally, I think this is the final position of the engine. We have enough room here for the cable, for the spark plug. We have this mount done and this mount done. Like we need to put this carburetor there. And then the problem is gonna be here, of course, but we knew that the sprocket is like really trapped here. So we're gonna have to modify this part but uh, let's mount the carburetor first put the sprocket on the wheel and then put the wheel on and we're gonna go from there okay so i shortened this tube cleaned the burr from inside so we don't obstruct the airflow and i cut this piece of hose and now with two clamps let's see how it's gonna fit huh, i think that's perfect actually okay well i think actually that's perfect and we can actually shorten it a little because now 
Now there's a little gap between the two pipes and I don't want that because that creates an obstruction. So like that, okay. So let's do, let's do the wheel now. Okay, so this is how the sprocket goes or the other way. I don't know, we have to look at the menu. But before we do that, we're gonna have to deal with this issue here. So we're gonna take it apart and we're gonna put some grease on the bearings and then we're gonna tighten it to the right tension because right now everything is so loose, it's crazy. Of course, this nut is moving now. Okay, if this one is moving, let's take it out. special tool for here but we don't have it so we're gonna try using a screwdriver so we can hold the spacer down there uh oh our bearings are coming apart oh don't disappear on me I need you Okay, that's better. It's not perfect, but it's better. I also cleaned all the hardware, so now we can put some grease and assemble it. I'm not gonna take this out. I need a special tool here to remove this special nut inside so I can take this out and grease it. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna shove grease inside and forget about it, just like that. There's a bearing inside. So, as we have these ones locked together now, we're gonna shove them from the other side. And we're gonna have to be careful here, not no, now, not to push the bearings out stay in about this like there are very small pictures in the instructions but I I think this is how it goes we have no choice but to try so here we have these two rubber pieces so one goes on the outside the other one goes inside but it needs to be cut of course so right between the holes The other one goes on the other side, then the sprocket, and then on the inside we have these two half moons, and we're gonna put one, like, I don't know if you see the cut, but we're gonna put the cut to be somewhere in the middle of the moon, I don't want the two moons to be meeting right where the cut is, so we're gonna put this one somewhere in the middle. Ok, 
Okay, let's see how true it rides. Ooh, it's very wobbly. Okay, so I loosened them all and I made sure that this gap now is pretty even on all sides. Here, this gap wasn't even on all of sides. Now it looks like it is pretty even. Now we're gonna tighten them and we're gonna start adjusting the wobbling part. We have a play of one millimeter. And I'm gonna leave it there because the manual says 1.5 millimeter is the tolerance. All right, so this is our next problem that we have to deal with. I was hoping that at least on the top I won't need to do anything, but it looks like even on the top it interferes with the brakes, uh, with the bracket for the brake. And I'm still not at the point where I'm willing to give this up. We need to have brakes. <laughs> there is this tensioner that comes with the kit, which we need to put somewhere. So I was thinking maybe if I put it here somehow and keep the chain higher so we can still have the brakes or here. But the thing is, this is the tight part of the chain. You know, when the engine is pulling this way, it's gonna pull the top of the wheel to go this way. This means that this is gonna be the tight part of the chain and I don't want to have the tensioner there. This is gonna be the loose part. You know, when the, it has a little bit of slack, always when this turns, in this case, counterclockwise, it's gonna collect all the slack from this side and it's gonna put it on the bottom. So this is where we're gonna have the slack. So this is where I need to put the tensioner. I think as a beginning, I can cut this here and here and here, bend it out and put it back. So that's gonna allow the chain to come to somewhere here. And then once this is welded here, we're gonna have to cut this and deal with that. Maybe we will see what we're gonna do with that later. made another cut here and now we can twist that as well now it is solid enough that we can cut here and here somewhere maybe so we can make room for this part of the chain to go down from here fortunately we're gonna have to remove the engine but I think I'm going to mark the cuts. Now it can be lower than that. So the cut should be here. Okay, so the only problem is here, a little bit here, but this we can cut, no problem. Or maybe when we move this out, actually, yeah, when we move this out, that's not gonna be such a big problem there. So we're gonna um, take it out. Here we can take part of this and we can just weld it like that again. We will see what we're gonna do here, or maybe just a flat plate here on the outside. It's gonna be enough. I hope. This is still welded to this, so we're good there. Now I see another problem though, which is here. The chain is touching this. Um, so this is probably where we're gonna put this uh, tensioner to pull the chain up after this is removed, of course. I hope we're gonna be able to, to move it out. Okay, I cut this completely. I don't think we need it. <laughs> 
we have too many things to worry about right so now when i put the chain here you see it goes perfectly absolutely no problem the only problem now that we have here is this interference so we're gonna have to put the tensioner here and lift it a little but we might also file this a little bit there to make room or it's gonna file itself anyways for here i'm just gonna put this back i'm gonna cut the top and the bottom off and i'm gonna put one plate on the other side and weld it back as it was and then the other plate on this side and weld it back as it was and that's gonna be perfect so this has been welded i welded also these all over the place um, i removed the wheel and welded them on the inside and everywhere i also performed the brake delete so we don't have rear brakes anymore we're gonna see how we're gonna deal with that and now we have another problem i'm sick and tired of these problems so you see this teeth here i can't tighten it more than that so i have to go in this direction which is fine because this way i match exactly here so if i remove this link and put the joint the connector here that's perfect but we have way too much slack here which i don't know how to deal with but maybe it just came to my mind i can put it down like this oh that's a way that's the way oh i, I got <laughs> scared actually but no that's perfect all right so that's how it's gonna be but then definitely we're gonna need to grind this here because it's touching there you see one two three four so this is where we have to remove this part. <gasps> Okay, so these are the two options. I think I should do this way and try and cut it here. Alright, so I decided I welded it here, top and bottom, and uh, now it actually rides pretty well now the only issue is a little bit here it's touching very little so so i'm gonna take everything apart now and i'm gonna grind a little bit more here then i'm gonna paint everything and we're gonna assemble it and we're gonna be ready with this part of the bike okay so i took it apart i ground a little bit down there i don't know if you can see but I widened it a little bit this way with these two so hopefully now it's not gonna touch cleaned up the rust very quickly with the wire wheel runs a coat of uh, black paint and that's gonna be it now while it dries let's put our attention to the gas tank let's remove this and see how we're gonna mount the gas tank there this cable needs to be deleted because it's for the front gears which we're not gonna use but we still need to use the other cable which is for the rear gears or that's for the rear gears oh yeah that's for the rear gears so this has to stay all right that was actually much easier than expected it was just four bolts with two brackets underneath now we have another issue here with this cable this arm is very low now and now this cable is way too short from here to there obviously we're gonna have a very tall bike which is fine but um, when we put this cable together we're gonna have to slip in a little extension maybe even longer so we can have some slack here and then our cable here is not gonna be long enough probably wow should we perform a rear shifter delete too just leave it in one gear and forget about it 
<laughs> we will see. Next we're gonna put the petcock, but I don't have plumber's tape. So I'm gonna try without. I'm gonna pour some fuel inside and we will see. If it leaks, then I'm gonna have to wait with that part. Well, that went in very easy, so um, sure it's not gonna hold without plumber's tape, so that part can wait. So I think the next step should be mount the engine permanently, mount, mount the rear wheel per permanently, see what we're gonna do with the gear shifter. We might just take the cable off and leave it in one position, just keep it there as a tensioner and then maybe start dealing with the handlebars and all the other stuff until we get plumber's tape. So let's do what we can. Okay, it's all assembled and I think now we are pretty good here. It might touch every once in a while as it's shaking. We will see. If it needs adjustments, we're gonna do them later. So for now I'm gonna assemble this. There's a pin here inside with a bowl. This little bowl goes inside. Then this pin they are spring loaded that's our clutch actually so now we can put our clutch lever with the cover and the bolt okay so i installed the rear shifter here i removed the cable and naturally it went to the biggest gear here which is good because we're going to put it on the smallest in the front and this means it's gonna be always in first gear so it's gonna be easy to start going and start the engine and after that we don't need it so i don't think i'm gonna do anything other than that i'm just gonna ignore all gears we need the shifter here only to act as a tensioner that's what happens But let's come back to the center and deal with the exhaust because my concern is well i thought that the exhaust might touch the pedals or the pedals might touch the exhaust but it looks like i'm wrong but let's mount it since the engine is mounted permanently now so that's perfect it's not too low and it's not touching the pedals great okay she's on the ground and as expected she's <laughs> pretty tall the seat cannot go any lower than that because the tube is hitting the other tube inside so that's fine because we're gonna cut this top tube and we're gonna drop it wherever we want it now the only thing that remains is to deal with this entire mess here of cables change the handlebars and uh, clean and paint here Whew. well i cut the seat i cut the pipe for the seat and it's still way too high so i think i'm gonna cut another half inch here like i'm gonna cut this outer pipe i'm gonna shorten it by half inch or actually three quarters and that's everything i can do i can do more than that so it is what it is all right let's see what we don't need here what we need so in fact we don't have any gears anymore so we don't need this and we don't need this where we change gears we don't need rear brake <laughs> and we only need the front brake which is this so this is the front brake but i'm gonna move it to this side so it is on the right handlebar as it is on the motorcycles and then the, we're gonna have more room here for the clutch
It's gonna lift this little barrel. You see the needle that was inside? Yeah. That needle goes into a hole and through this hole is where the fuel comes in. Okay. So you lift the barrel, the, li the barrel lifts the needle and opens the hole. The, the needle is like tapered. Mm -hmm. So the more you pull out, the, the wider the hole becomes and yeah. more fuel goes in. So that's mm -hmm. how the throttle operates. Okay, time to put the spark plug. Is this one just gonna fit, eh? No. What if we shorten it? <laughs> okay. Doesn't need much, it's just a little bit. And now the cable. With the coil all right so it's the next day and i got plumber's tape so we're gonna seal here i also got fuel it's a non-ethanol so that's the fuel that's recommended for small engines we just need to mix it with uh, two-stroke oil we'll find the right ratio and we're gonna do our premix we're gonna pour it and then we're gonna be ready to start it i'm gonna isolate this as well so it is pre-mixed and that should be enough as a beginning. So we have to open the fuel and it starts going right away. Look at that. Filled up the filter and that's where it stopped. <laughs> well, there you go, it goes in the curve. So here we have a choke. I'm gonna turn the choke on. And let's see if she's gonna start. Ooh, it's a lot of compression actually. I'm gonna press the clutch. Wow. To pedal. Hmm. Did I do something wrong with the wire? I'm gonna disconnect the kill switch and if we have to kill it, we're gonna figure out how to kill it. spark plug and see if we have spark at all. See if I can electrocute myself. Yeah, there is spark. Mm, now I try it, I think.
warmed up, so let's try again now. Oh, we have to clutch. There's nothing like the smell of the two-stroke exhaust. I love it. <laughs> Reminds me of my childhood. Anyway, so it's done. It rides. There are a few things that we have to take care of. I think the chain loosened a lot. Like, I don't know how. Probably just needed to be broken in. So now it is pretty loose. So we have to deal with that. But other than that, it rides pretty well. The problem is it the clutch is really, really stiff. Like even my hand hurts when I press it. I don't know why it is so hard to do it. So we have to figure out something about that because I'm not sure the kids are gonna be able to ride it. And we definitely need a rear brake because, and that thing is actually pretty fast. So we're gonna have to make some kind of modification here, some kind of a bracket that comes here and holds our jaws. Yeah, actually. Maybe we should use this seat because it is a little bit lower. This is much thicker. So that's going to drop it down a little because it's still too high. Yeah, the chain needs to be reworked again. It's very, very loose. Ah, okay, so we shortened the chain. We shortened the chain by one link and now it is much better. It's not so skippy and the chain is not shaking so much.
that's everything for today guys thanks for watching commenting and subscribing and if this is the first video of this channel that you're watching maybe you should consider watching some other videos because there's a lot of interesting restorations of classic cars on this channel so if you like this video may, you may consider hitting that button subscribe and the button next to it which is the little bell bing 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 it's gonna notify you when i post new videos anyways thanks for watching guys bye